Think positive thoughts. Embrace your setbacks. Live a positive life. Remember, it's all in your mind. Yeah, well, it's all bullshit, she said with a smile as she tore another page and set it on fire. It only took a couple of chapters of this garbage for me to see flashes of red carnage. Goody two-shoes with his positive attitude, sniffing his own farts and vomiting platitudes. Pretty paragon with astonishing attributes, stern of anger, mind-boggling magnitude. Just where does he get off claiming to get what it's like being me, she said, shaking her head. I'll never have I read anything half as phony as this sanctimonious crap damn near odious. Page after page he goes on about the power of positive thought, but for so long, shit has been shoveled in my face, so get that, when some douchebag tells me to embrace my setbacks, I almost get the feeling it was meant to provoke, she continued in contempt, staring into the smoke, I'm sure within those pages there was something to learn, but I feel I get more out of it watching them burn. I'm searching, she said, now looking at me, but I'm fairly confident it's not a book that I need. And it doesn't really matter if it's written by a sage, she concluded quite calmly and lit another page. Some people write these books to get rid of their demons. Others don't write but feel bliss when they read them. Then there are those who get sick to their stomachs by the writers and the readers when it reaches its summit and it turns into rage too huge to neglect then burning a page can have a soothing effect. <laughs> Myself, I observe and take notes and quotes. Like the old saying goes, whatever floats your boat. Now put your lighters up. Really nice to be here with you all. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna read uh, some more poems for you. In this next poem, uh, I will invite a guest up. And you will be amazed, because he looks exactly like me. Uh, <laughs> And that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, but uh, 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 this one is for everyone in the audience who's unemployed. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Okay. That's always a party starter. Uh, uh, it's, it's for everyone who's unemployed or maybe those who are employed uh, 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 but are not very happy with their employment. That's not you. You love it here. Okay. Uh, 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 and, and maybe want to seek out a new career for themselves. So this, because uh, I've seen in like American movies, uh, I sometimes watch these American movies. I maybe haven't heard of that small little genre called Hollywood movies, but but I, I sometimes watch these movies, and especially like the, the the movies that are set in schools. I've learned that they have a, a phenomenon in American schools called Career Day. I, I, I was not familiar with this before, but career day is apparently when a grown-up comes to your classroom, maybe someone's dad or mom, and they tell you about their brilliant career and how wonderful it is to become an adult and step into the, 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 the whole of, world of working for a wage. Uh, and so I never had that in school. I don't know how it's, what it was like uh, going to school here in Estonia, but in Sweden, uh, uh, sort of semi-socialist Sweden. We, we, the, when in school, the, the teacher, the, the equivalent of a career day was basically the teacher saying, "Well, when you grow up, you can work if you want to." <laughs> and I didn't want to, so, so I became a poet, uh, and, and here I am. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. We're now going to have one of these career days because I'm going to invite a guest and he's going to talk about his career and, and his way of making money. Like, maybe not his job, actually, but his sort of job. He's a pickpocket. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, please uh, 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 take notes and maybe uh, uh, you'll have a new career uh, ready for you after this. It's called A Pocket or Two. People call me picky, picking pockets my profession and I master my craft, do you have any questions? I'm happy to demonstrate the tricks of the trade, sneak upon them, do your thing and then be quick to evade. Just the old in and out without even being noticed. 
except for the empty space the pockets of their coats get. But when they finally realize that I'll be far away, you know, kind of on my way to try to find another prey, live to fight another day, that's a motto that I follow. I'm still gonna grab some wallets when I'm coming back tomorrow. I ain't dumb, I know my income kind of would be more steady with a more secure livelihood. But I'm not in the mood for a job interview because my chances of getting it, they are minimal. Pick a pocket or two and remember the thought, it is not criminal if you never get caught. <laughs> the devil dances in an empty pocket, of course. I will try to fill mine with the content of yours. Showing patience won't get me far. Motivational seminars at the unemployment office only tame me and make me soft. Start off at the bottom, hope to get some prosperity. Maybe as a trainee with next to no salary. Insanity, it's time to get this hair banana peel. Cause damn it feels like a hamster wheel so we don't have a deal. I'm sick of all this, think I'll stick to picking pockets. The tricky part is just to figure how to pick your targets. But I think I got it, first rule is elementary. Don't go for the scruffy looking coats, they'll be empty. But also do not go for the fanciest jackets. Their wallets got no cash, only carrying plastic. The rich get a free pass, yet the shit is twisted. Goddamn credit cards, they are messing with my business. <laughs> Some pick pockets and packs, but me, I'm working alone. Try to keep it more discreet, that's how I earn what I own. The bump into technique is frequently exercised. But it ain't for me, eventually you'll be recognized. Some create a diversion to get their target distracted. Shove a hand into their pockets, then their wallets retracted. Okay technique, but time consuming as hell. I'm just light fingered smooth and I'm moving in stealth. I tell you this fella, he ain't for mentally daft. It takes one hell of a fella, it is a delicate craft. Not here to dwell on the past, but it ain't how it used to be. The way of this digital age confuses me. See, I'm used to snatching metal coins and paper bills, but now, for nowadays, it requires a new set of skills. Because money moves into computers where they're keeping a the catalog. Soon all money is digital, but my digits are analog. <laughs> travel around and read my poetry to people. I've been told several times, it's really like fun, it's, it's a great experience that people come up to you and tell you that you, you're good every now and then. And they, it's awesome, you should, you should try having some people tell you that every now and then. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, 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 they, they, they don't, they, you, you write good poetry, they say. As if I didn't know, I'm the one writing it. But uh, uh, no, but but the thing is, a lot of a lot of them are. You write good poetry, but and and, and then it's not that funny anymore. And then you come to, they, they want to stick their nose in the stuff, and, and it's, it's, you know that it's the same. Like I'm not racist, but and then comes something really stupid. I'm not homophobic, but these these gay guys come here and they take all our girlfriends and. Uh, <laughs> People are not that intelligent. I mean, I, I, yeah, but, but they, you write good poetry, but you always complain in your poetry. You always write dark poetry about like horrible stuff, and you never write any happy poems about like s sunny beaches and uh, skipping puppy dogs and shit. Um, and and that, uh, that, that's true. I only I mainly write like dark poems, and. So I finally decided to, to write a poem that is only about stuff that I like. You want to hear it? <laughs> awesome! It's called, I Like Darkness. <laughs> but at least I tried. Here we go. I like darkness. And not metaphorically speaking, I simply like the lack of light. I like movies in black and white. But not literally, I mean that as in movies with plots with obvious opposites. I like cookies with chocolate chips. They go great with Kool-Aid. I like school days. And I've done so ever since the day I graduated. I like reviews that are heavily exaggerated. Good or bad doesn't matter much as long as they have that psychopathic touch. I like words that unravel the dirt and the gravel. I like to travel as long as I can do it rhyming. I like jokes with not just bad but perfectly stupid timing. Sometimes I like to open my window just to let some noise in. 
I like my town with a little drop of poison. Though I really can't tell why. I like to sell my records at local stores. I like Tom Waits' vocal cords. Cause they remind me of that old dusty road Woody was blowing down and then transformed into a metaphor. Still so valid in this modern age we appear to be in. And I've overcome my fear of the wind. I like the beard on my chin. And the things it tells me about people and their flaws. Old folks think I'm a terrorist and kids think I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> and who knows, I'm probably partially a bit of both. I prefer a full moon to a shiny sun. I, I like Apocalypse 91, my favorite public enemy album with tracks sending shockwaves flying through the air like cannonballs. I like other animals and I eat vegetarian, but not necessarily health food. And I'm slowly starting to like myself too. And I'm slowly starting to like myself too. Yeah. I'm and perform with my DJs. I do a lot of hip hop stuff. And it's basically the same sort of darkness in the hip hop lyrics mainly. And I realized that I needed to, to like uh, uh, conform better to the, the to the hip hop norm. Because if I don't know if anybody of you has ever heard this thing they call uh, the radio. <laughs> Two or three of you have heard the radio. Uh, it is a small machine uh, pumping out uh, 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 audio violence for your ears and so uh, no but if you listen to the radio you understand that the most important thing to talk about when you're a rapper or like a hip-hop artist the most important thing to talk about is party <laughs> yay I'm glad you're with me on that one oh, awesome uh, uh, so so and, and I'm I'm a bit I, I'm not used to the whole like throw your hands in the air and shake that ass and all the champagne and stuff and expensive Cars. Uh, I'm not used to that, but I'll, I'll try my best. So I've written one party rhyme. And, and when I say that I've written a party, I don't mean I've written a, a party song or, or even a verse. Uh, one rhyme. That's all you get. And it's I, I, it, almost. I mean, it starts off as a party rhyme, but it, it, I get a bit confused. So I hope you're with me with, with this one. And, and, and pay attention and focus. Because in a, in a minute it'll be over and then you miss the party and, and, and it sucks being you basically. But, so, so focus really hard and we're going to have a great party for like three seconds. Here we go. Throw your hands in the air like they're not attached. And realize without hands they'll be hard to catch. <laughs> Like you see on the screen, I'm from Rossi, and, and uh, uh, if you didn't know, English is not the the, the, the native tongue that I speak. It's it's actually it's 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 Swedish. My mom's from Norway, so you could say that my mother tongue is Norwegian. Uh, uh, but I don't write poetry in Norwegian. If 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 you knew Norwegian, you would understand that it's completely impossible to be dark and depressed. In Norwegian. <laughs> and, and they all sound like they're like, like on a wonderful skipping walk through the mountains. It's, so yeah, I stick to Swedish and English. Uh, sorry, mom. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to read one poem in Swedish. I, I, I have no idea if anybody of you understands any Swedish at all. Probably not. That one, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, we talked earlier. Yes, awesome. So this one's for you, and you can tell everybody else what it was about. Afterwards. It's 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 called uh, it's called truce, uh, uh, and viva in Swedish. Like in, in like, basically all over Europe have these like racist parties in in government uh, nowadays. We have one too. I hate them. Uh, and it's it's basically one of their one of their points is that they, they seem to be really annoyed. By, by some people not like wearing exactly the same clothes that, as they are used to seeing. That's extremely annoying to them. And also like maybe maybe eating 
food that they haven't tasted. And, and, and they get really annoyed by that. And some music that they play, it sounds strange to them. So that's a really annoying. And, and I try my best to understand people that I hate. Uh, and these are the, the racist people of the racist party, but I try to understand them, and I, 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 I can understand the, I, the, the feeling of being annoyed with other people. Uh, that, one, that I can understand, because almost every day I'm annoyed by people. Almost everyone I meet annoys me. <laughs> no matter where they're from. People in general, general are shit. Uh, uh, but no, but people in general, at least in Sweden, people in general listen to shit music. So I get the idea of being annoyed by people listening to music that I don't like. I get the idea. But then, that, I also come to the conclusion that that is my problem, not theirs. So I, that, that's something for me to work on, not for them to work on. So that's my message to this whole uh, pack of idiots in government. Uh, 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 that maybe it's not so horrible. You, you don't have to like everything, but you don't have to hate it and throw it away. Anyway. Ah, here we go. Truth. Mina fötter de har traskat här på jordens hårda skorpa Över 30 långa år, nu är jag ganska trött Min frustration och fan blivit stor Mitt tålamod har satt på prov Gång efter en annan av varenda klant jag mött Om jag bara ägt en bössa Hade jag nog inte tvekat om att lägga an Och bara skjuta er Så det var väl tur då att jag inte har någon bössa För då blir vi kanske tvungna till att sluta fred Jag stör mig på ditt prat, stör mig på din mat Stör mig på det sättet som du för dig när du rör dig genom stan Vill du vara schysst och gå från min tysta vrå För jag blir besviken på musiken som du valt att lyssna på En oändlig lista har jag för det hjälper visst att klaga För då känns min trista vardag lite mer okej okay. Nu har säkert ni en likadan Jag räknar med att ni tar fram den varje gång ni tvingas till att se på mig Vi tjatar på, gnatar, gapar högt men aldrig pratar Visst jag erkänner nu kan det vara skönt som fan Att bara gå Och hata, men då vore det väl satan om vi inte kunde bjuda på ett försök ibland Allt som oftast går vi där och dränger på varandra För en vardagen känns avslagen Då kan man klandra andra samma andra som förvandlar annars fina människor Till potentiella fiender som visen vänds emot Känner vrede mot min granne när jag sneglar på den stammen För han speglar nog väl kanske samma grinighet Som jag innerst inne vet att jag själv också nog förmedlar till de människor jag passerar och nog svider det. Mina fötter de har traskat här på jordens hårda skorpa över 30 långa år, nu är jag ganska trött. Min frustration och fan blir stor, mitt tålamod har satt på prov gång efter annan av varenda knant jag mött. Om jag bara ägt en bössa hade jag nog inte tvekat om att lägga an och bara skjuta er. Så det var väl tur då. Att jag inte har någon bössa, för då blir vi kanske tvungna till att sluta fri. It is a praise poem uh, to one of my great heroes from my childhood. I have had a lot of great heroes in my childhood, like like Orko from He-Man, little, fly, little flying wizard. Uh, um, Spider-Man was a big hero, uh, but but uh, they have nothing uh, to compare to this this uh, superhero uh, of my childhood. It is the old lady that had the candy store, uh, the candy shop around the corner where I lived as a kid, and her name was Magda, which sounds weird in English. So in the poem, she'll be called Martha, which is sort of the English equivalent of Magda. But you all know now that her real name was Magda. And the poem is called They Don't Make Them Like They Used To. <laughs> they don't make them like they used to, I'm afraid. You get no seal of approval nowadays. No warranties, just a lack of quality. They don't make them like they used to, honestly. Old Martha's candy shop was round the corner from our house and every Saturday we went there spending all of our allowance. A cozy little place, nothing matches the feeling of being eight years old and seeing candy stacked to the ceiling. But the world is not fair, neither was it back then. Cause some kids have always had more than others to spend. And Martha saw this and felt she had to take action and slightly even out the gaps in this here casual fashion. 
when kids with smaller budgets weighed their bags, then she just blinked an eye and then discreetly tipped the scale so that it seemed a little lighter. So regardless of if we came in with less or more, we had the same amount of candy when we left the store. Such a beautiful gesture, I don't know what to say. Social justice in practice and in her own subtle way. She was like a mentor to me, taught me lessons in ethics. And if you fail to see the beauty, you're no less than pathetic. Then sort of in a way that good old order went away because now Martha's dead and gone and that corner ain't the same. New ownership and a different look than before. It's not a candy store anymore. Instead they're selling porn. I'm not a regular there so it's kind of hard for me to know if they kept the same tip the scale policy. <laughs> I'm thinking not, but you never know. But I can say for sure. Shopkeepers, they don't make them like old Martha anymore. They don't make them like they used to, I'm afraid. You get no seal of approval nowadays. No warranties, just a lack of quality. They don't make them like they used to, honestly. Thank you so much.